nowhere you won't go Nothing you won't do No place that I could hide You were always in pursuit I'm never too far gone Always in your side When I wait for you You're always right on time You're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing me More than the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop Never gonna stop And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me You made a way for me Opened up the door Jesus, you have my heart Now and forevermore You're always pursuing
within my bones There is no hesitation In your love and affection It's the sweetest of all
villain is just really getting on my nerves. Same! You know, I'm starting to think we might not even need that map anyway. True. We seem to be learning a lot without it. Well, just in case we do, let's try to defeat the villain's challenge and hopefully get another piece of our map and then maybe it'll make sense. Well, Detective Charles is ready to go! <gasps> that was really loud. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, but Lieutenant Tracy is ready also. Okay, once again, the villain has texted us both. Yes. However, this time it's in code. So the villain has texted us emojis, and they are emojis that are explaining a story in the Bible, and we have to figure out what story that is. For example, my first line of emojis is the hand emoji, the running man emoji, the boat emoji, the whale emoji, and a megaphone emoji. Megaphone, uh, pointing, running, boat, whale. I feel like the whale is giving it away. Yeah, I don't know any other Bible story that has whales in it. Yep. Uh, Jonah and the whale? Yep, that is my guess But what is the pointing? Well. Point it's saying a man. go to Nineveh. Man. Get it, he gets on the boat. Get on a boat. Eaten by a whale and God called and then he goes and he has to talk to him. He's swallowed by a, a giant fish. That is correct. It's oh! Jonah Woo! and the whale. One for one. Let's see. This is in order. We got the haircut, strong arm, heart eyes, <gasps> normal normal face, sad face? What face is I that? I think that's just like the lady. Oh, just a, a, that's the lady face. A lady. Mm -hmm. Money, <gasps> more scissors, oh, and an no. eyeball. Haircut makes me think of Samson. Because he's strong. He fell in love with a woman. Delilah. Because of mummy, money. She cuts his hair for money. She gets money to cut his hair. And then now everyone has eyeballs. <laughs> Everyone's looking. I don't know what the eyeball is. But yeah, I don't either. But I'm going to say it's the story Samson of Samson. And Delilah. Samson. And that is correct. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. Mine is praying hands. Do not do it, son. <laughs> Some sort of scroll. A scroll. And then a lion. Hmm. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not totally sure uh, what this is. Part of me wants to just immediately say, like, Do Daniel, not pray because scroll. there's lions. Do not pray scroll. the lion's den. I think so. I think you're right. But I'm not sure. I feel like. Because do, don't pray to your god and uh, scroll. <laughs> Keep scrolling. So therefore, a lion. <laughs> Thank you for putting the lion in there. Uh, pray. Like, pray cannot. Do not. 
Look at the scroll, lion. Oh, the lion's in trouble. <laughs> it's Chronicles of Narnia! <laughs> love the, love the Lion King! <laughs> This is truly Simba or Mufasa. No, because there's lions kind of, uh, there's a few situations with lions, isn't there, in the Bible? So. I'm gonna say Daniel. Okay, all right, I'll go with you. Daniel the lion's den, Daniel. Yes, that's our final answer. You are correct. We're correct! Okay. We got sheep, thumbs up, carrot, thumbs down. Angry, <laughs> knife, angry man, death. <laughs> Skulls with bones. <laughs> what? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. This is a long a one. A sheep? A good good sheep, good thumbs up. And then we got carrot. <laughs> no, bad, carrot bad. Angry. I'm angry now, because carrot bad. I have a knife. I kill someone and I'm angry. And oh my dead. gosh. Oh! I think I know it. What is it? I think it's Cain and Abel. Because you think? Cain, no, which, which one brought the good gift? Offering. Abel. Abel, I think, brought the good gift. God was like, nice. And Cain brought not as good of an offering because he brought like veggies instead of like a uh, animal or whatever. Oh. And God was like, why are you bringing me the, the scrappings? I'm ups And then Cain like killed then Abel. Cain killed Abel. <laughs> I think that's it. Wow. Yes? Rough. That is right. It uh, yeah! Woo! How many of you church kids knew that the Bible was so interesting that there's murder? Yeah, it's creepy. Ding, ding, ding. Which is bad. Which is a bad thing. Obviously. <laughs> okay, mine's really long, so get ready, buckle up. I've got a man with a beard, and then just he's Must walking. It's a mustache. And a beard. Oh, you're right, you're right. And then he's just walking, and there's a money sack, and then there's some flying money, and then a really sad face, and then a pig, and then a happy face with hands, and then he's just walking, and then the man with the beard, and then a happy face again. I don't even know what this means. Oh, yeah. I want my money. Pig. He goes away, he gets his money, he, his money flies away. I don't get. Oh, I see. Because he uses all of his money. money. Sorry, the prodigal scone. Son, man. Prodigal scone. Pro 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 <laughs> prodigal scone. Long story short. <gasps> yes, it is the prodigal son. I've got to tell the story. I've got to tell the story. Oh. <laughs> A young son asked for his inheritance early. His father gave it to him. And then he squandered all his living. He spent all his money, all of it. Then he got really sad and ended up falling asleep in a pig pen. And he's like, I want to come home now. And he comes home and his father's super happy to see him. And then, uh, yeah, all is yeah. good. Okay. I don't know. That's desert, some desert. Mm -hmm. Looks kind of cool. Grandpa praying. SOS, water. Israelites in the desert. Moses, yeah, old man, yeah, yeah, he yeah. prays, save us. And then God gives them water. He cracked open a stone, gave him water, so it's story of Moses. That, or it's w when he took them out of I Egypt. I think it's probably the crack open water one, maybe. You think so? Okay, Moses parting know. the Red Sea. Moses, I don't know. I think that's it. <gasps> I'm nervous. Moses parting the Red Sea. Yes. Woo! Yeah! Is it a loaf of bread, a couple fish, and a knife and a fork? So I'm gonna go ahead and say it's probably when yep. Jesus fed, fed the, the five thousand. That is correct. Yeah. Nice. That one was easy. Two, uh, we've got a man and woman in love. We've got a big old tree, an <gasps> apple, and a snake. What could that be? Wonder what that one is. How about the first story in Genesis of humans, Adam and Eve, when they eat the forbidden fruit. <clears throat> Wrong. <gasps> really? I'm just kidding. You're right. <laughs> okay, I was like, I don't think there's any other thing. I was so shocked. <laughs> okay. My final one is the number 10, a frog. A moon, some walking feet, some ants, and then dead. Oh. Skull, skull dead. It's so skull, my I mean, guess is. Or it just means bones, like skinny, maybe hungry. No, it's dead okay. because uh, my guess is that it's the 10 plagues. Of Egypt? Mm -hmm. It was 10? Yeah, I think so. Why did I think it was seven? I'm pretty sure it's 10. Okay, is that correct? <laughs> Yes. The plagues of Egypt it is. Okay, the next one. Wow, this one's so hard. We got a boat, two <laughs> pigs, two cows, two tigers, water, rain, and rainbow. <gasps> well, I wonder, how about the story of Noah's Ark? Wow. When all, when all the animals, um. Aminals. A aminals got on the boat. The real question, the most important question is, were the dinosaurs before or after? Were there dinosaurs on the ark? And how did they not eat everybody? It is oh, the yeah. story of Noah's <laughs> Ark. Final answer. You are correct. Yes! Woo! We did it! Ah, what a great game. Woo! Now what? Ah! <laughs> What's on my head? Look at that! That was tough, but we got another map piece. We did. Look at it. It's all mappy and stuff. Hmm. 
tool. I still don't know how this is supposed to help us. Yeah, me. we just have three pieces that look like this. Yeah, I don't either, but, uh, well, church kids, hopefully whatever game you are playing is not as difficult as that just was for us, because, um, actually, well, some of them were pretty easy, but some of them are hard. So anyways, yeah. get up on your feet, get ready for a game. Let's go! What's up, church kids? My name is Teacher Chris, and I am here for another game called Hula Palooza. I need two people. What you're gonna do is you're gonna lay on your back here and here, head this way, feet this way, all right? Now, when you are on your back, you're gonna reach over your head, you're gonna grab a hula hoop, and you're gonna do a solid sit-up. I'm talking tight core, I'm talking straight sit-up, crunches, whatever you need to do. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach back, tight, 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 and then, Boom, put the hula hoop at your feet on the other side of the cone. The first person to get one, two, three, four, five hula hoops on the other cone wins the game. Are you ready? Tighten that core, cause here we go! The game begins in three, two, one. John 8, uh -huh. 31 and 32, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. <laughs> if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, the truth will set you free The weight has been lifted, it was nailed to the tree You'll feel lighter from your head to your feet Like David throwing moves in the middle of the street So abide, what's a bad? Definition's kinda wide It means to reside or to live on the inside Tide to your heart the word should be Is the source of the truth There's the honey to the bee So buzz, buzz, little bubble Flying to disciple But if I'm an OG, gotta live in my Bible It's my tribal, yes my guiding test Call me out when I'm a mess Thank you Jesus, you're the best I want you and nothing less Share it with your brethren Steward his house and keep it fresh when he comes again If you abide in my word You are truly my disciples You will know the truth And the truth will set you free If you abide in my word You are truly my disciples You will know the truth And the truth will set you free If you abide in my word You are truly my disciples You will know the truth And the truth will set you free If you abide in my word You are truly my disciples You will know the truth And the truth will set you free Man, we have learned so much this month already about truth. Yes, we have. Something I have learned is that even though I believe it or someone else believes it, doesn't necessarily mean it's true. That's right, Tracy. Our Bible verse says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. John 8, 31 through 32. Believing something is true doesn't mean it's true. But like our memory verse says, if we learn what the Bible says, we will learn the truth and the truth will set you free. 
Remember, our faith declaration is, when I step towards Jesus, I step towards truth. This month, we are being truth detectives. We are working hard to find out who Jesus is and what the Bible says about who we are. You know, I bet our lesson has even more to say about the truth. So let's check it out. Want to learn how to disagree with someone? Nope. Hang on for the loop. Three, two, one. Sorry, but you're wrong. This is Ricky, and he mistakenly thinks that Spider-Man is the best superhero. And this is Ellie, and she mistakenly thinks that Iron Man is <laughs> the best superhero. I only think that because it's true. <laughs> Strongly disagree! Yeah, I can tell that because of the way you're getting louder and louder. Listen, Iron Man is the best superhero, hands down. Here's why. He has a bunch of suits. He flies around. He lives in a big house. He always seems to know what to do in crucial situations. Yeah. It's easy to do when your biggest superpower is money. Like, you know how much math and science you have to do to be able to understand how pendulum swings happen? I don't, but Spider-Man does. Your argument is that pendulum swing. Yeah. Iron Man has suits that, like, power the universe. Also, Spider-Man is so small. Yeah, yeah, he's small because he's mighty. And everyone keeps on trying to steal Iron Man's technology and use it for evil. You can't steal. Iron Man is there, Spider-Man's Spider web. Any he size, it catches off. thieves just like flies. Gone. He doesn't keep and anything in secret. He's Spider Iron Man. Man. His catchphrase is I child. am Iron Man. Silly string. Spider Man shoots a silly string. Iron Man has cool suits. Yeah, and silly string Your is fun. When is the last time you had silly string? In any situation, it'd be a bad time. Okay, you can't be my friend if you don't like Spider Man. That's how it's gonna be? Yeah. Our friendship lives or dies based on this debate. Help us, Judo Bob. What's up? I'm Judo Bob, and this is not your normal infomercial material. And I'm here to talk to you about how to treat people that disagree with you. Do you break them with a nice Judo chop? <laughs> no, as much as you might like to. There are basically two elements, not four, just two, I'm, I'm saying two on each hand, elements to get a black belt in disagreement. The first is grace, the other is truth. And here's the thing, you need both. Just like pants and shirts, or in this case, a gi, that which is one element made up of several elements. Here's the thing, when someone believes something different than you, tension can grow. I call that the tension tree. Don't water it. And it can be tempting, just like a board that wants to be broken, to boil everything down to who's right, Who's wrong? Us versus them. You versus me. Fist versus tree. But you might ask, how do you disagree with someone that doesn't believe in God's truth without getting in a shouting match? You should. No, I don't. No, stop yelling no. at me. No, stop I yelling. Don't, believe don't make that, me break okay? you. No. Don't make me break you. It requires a huge amount of grace, like a dojo amount. That's a lot. Here's the thing: grace and truth are essential in connecting to people. Like if, if I'm over here and people are over there, I would need a bridge of grace and truth and, and maybe an actual bridge. And here's the thing, Judo Bob doesn't have it all figured out, but I extend grace in the same way of people extending grace to me, except broken boards. Those deserve to be broken. Grace establishes common ground, that's common ground because it's level, that we've all fallen short. Even you tall people can fall short, regardless of how tall you are. Start with common ground. Thanks for tuning in to this tubular infomercial. And if you want to swing by the dojo, you know where to find me. Judo Bob, out. Always think of yourself as everyone's servant. Look for Christ our Lord in everyone, and you will then have respect and reverence for them all. Ricky, we need to find some common ground. I'll see how we ever could. You don't like Spider-Man. Well, even though we can't agree on which superhero is the best, we both love superheroes. I guess that is a starting point. What's this? Oh, it's Mystery Hand. He must have a challenge for us. Thanks, Mystery Hand. In this Common Ground Challenge, we'll show you two people who seem like they have nothing in common. You'll work together to guess what they have in common. You can only give one answer between the two of you, so choose wisely. Okay. All right, let's take a look.
Hi, my name is Wendy. I'm passionate about going to the gym, uh, spending time with my family, and taking time for myself. Well, my name is Josh, and I'm passionate about playing guitar, and I'm passionate about professional wrestling and comic books. Okay, they both A, love Sour Patch Kids, B, love to do the floss, C, love swimming in the ocean, or D, love Monopoly. Oh my gosh, uh, Sour Patch Kids. I was thinking Sour Patch Kids really? too. Really? I was. Okay, okay. I mean, they both look like they could love Monopoly though. I don't think anyone loves Monopoly. I, I love Monopoly. I'm not sure it's B. I'm not sure anyone really loves to do the floss. Do you know how to do the floss, Ricky? Yeah, just take some string and just go yeah, okay, right in, okay. in the... I, I'm okay with the Sour Patch Kids. I think they both like they love Sour Patch Kids. Let's go for Sour Patch Kids. Okay, A, Sour Patch Kids. I like Monopoly a lot. I like Monopoly as we well. We're so close! There's a strategy to it, and I always win. I will play that game until people don't want to play anymore. And I want to keep playing, and no one else does. That's and me. my family won't play with me sometimes. I'm the person who doesn't want to play so anymore. It's so much fun to see the interaction of my family. My kids, how much do we just like, you know, uh, argue and cry and laugh about it. So it's so much fun. And my favorite one is the little dog. Yeah, <laughs> no, I should play for your family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of crying when I play Monopoly. I just... I have to win every time, even if it takes us three hours. Yeah, and, and I lose so early on because I can't resist the railroads. Well, next time, yeah. we will mind meld yeah. this. We're, we're new to this. Yeah, we got it, okay. Hi, my name is Ethan, and three things that I'm passionate about are playing with my brothers, cooking, and helping people. My name's Laura, and I like TV, traveling in airplanes, and any type of cookie. A. Love the smell of toasted marshmallows. B, love staying up late. C, love basketball. Or D, are allergic to tree nuts. Ooh. I'm, D is very specific. It is very specific. Tree nuts is a very specific thing to put on there. It is. So that's why I don't think it's D. Oh, you... Or do you think it's D? I thought it was. I was okay. going between love the smell of toasted marshmallows uh -huh. or love staying up late. But the allergic to tree nuts, it does seem like a, like, oh my gosh, we're both allergic. Right. I don't think it's love basketball. No, I don't think so. Uh, Do you love the smell of toasted marshmallows? Um, I love the smell of toasted basketballs. That's uh, wow! I've never smelled a toasted basketball before. Yeah, it's uh, rubbery. Yeah, I think I was thinking B. Honestly, staying up late. Okay, let's go like, with B. Yeah, B is our answer. Okay. I like to stay up late because I yes! feel like yes! I do we all the stuff during the day, okay. and then at night I can do whatever I want to do. I like to stay up late and watch TV or play games. I like to watch TV and play video games. Wow, they have so much in common. That's so great. Oh, what is this? We got a pin. We oh. got a common ground pin. Yeah, and it's. I think it's ground beef. I think it is ground beef. Look at that. I'm going to put it on my, I love that. All right, so we have one question wrong, but one pin achieved. And before we go to our next one, let's go to Big Stuff Tiny Book. Big Stuff Tiny Book. All right, let's talk about how to disagree. We don't always agree with each other. You guys know that. Hats with brims are dangerous. I don't like your tone. We must fight with swords. God told us to love everyone, but that doesn't mean we'll always agree on every issue. Am I right? So how can we have healthy and helpful disagreements? Well, let's start with some harmful ways to disagree, like refusing to hear information outside of our chosen viewpoint. This is called an echo chamber interrupting or shouting down other arguments, you are wrong. Canceling people who disagree with you, losing all respect, letting rudeness divide us, or name calling, you animal. Reducing people to a label of anything less than human, that's just not cool. So let's talk about some tips on how to disagree based on how Jesus disagreed, which it's always a good thing to follow Jesus. Number one, love people without motive. Whether or not they agree with you, love them anyway. Start with a love foundation. Two, listen to understand, not to be right. This will help keep you humble and patient. Pause and consider before you speak. And three, find eye contact and some common ground. If possible, just get face to face. Body language and tone is lost with online arguments. Just remember, you know, we're all human, okay? So that's how to disagree. Just don't be afraid to disagree. When you see injustice, speak up, show grace and dig for truth. My name is Tony, and I grew up in a foreign country called Spain, where soccer's king. They call it football over there, but everyone just loves soccer like crazy. 
And they're big rivalries. I remember one time I was hanging out with some friends and we decided to go over to uh, the, his house. And as we were walking over there, I noticed that the dad was standing right in front of the door and he was stopping people at the door and he was asking them, hey, what soccer team do you cheer for? And uh, evidently I cheered for uh, his least favorite soccer team because I told him who I cheered for and he said, you're not welcome in my house, get out. <laughs> I was like, for real? And he's like, yep. And so I remember me and my friend, we had to like just straight up leave. And I remember feeling alone. I remember feeling rejected, uh, but it makes me think about God. And it makes me think about how he doesn't stop us at a door. He doesn't make sure that we cheer for the right team. He doesn't make sure that we're wearing the right shoes or that we go to the right school. And neither should we. We shouldn't be concerned about other people's appearance, who their parents are, if their parents are even together, what school they go to, they're playing Fortnite or not, what shoes they're wearing. God's grace connects us and we need to be extending that grace to other people. We need to be telling people about Jesus, telling people the truth and connecting through grace. All right, Ricky, we have one round left. Are you ready? Uh, yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Ariana and I love traveling. I love helping people find community and I love cats. Hey, I'm Ravi and I love running and I love uh, my family, and I also love, uh, we'll just go with candy. Ooh. Okay, here are some good ones. Okay. They both, A, love 90s hip hop, uh -huh. B, love playing piano, okay. C, love all things Disney, or D, love a good iced coffee. I feel like we're gonna be friends with all of, like, any of these I options I love these are great. people already. Yeah. yeah. absolutely. I think this is the one where it's, the answer is E, all of the above. Yes. Ugh. I don't see that one on there, though. I'm going between A or D. Ooh. Love 90s hip hop or love a good iced coffee. I'm gonna go with 90s hip hop. Okay, I feel really good about that one. I do too. I feel really good about 90s hip hop. That may be something that they don't tell everyone, but they both love it. They yeah. look like they secretly love 90s hip hop, you oh, know? Yeah. yeah. And we all know everyone hates the piano. It's just. I, I mean, I kind of like the piano, but. Oh, you do? Yeah, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm not I love Disney movies. Those are my favorite. I grew up with them. They just remind me of when I was little, and I just love them. Disney movies are the best. I love Disney movies so much now, too, because I have two daughters. And so I not only I grew up watching all these Disney movies, but now I get to watch them with my kids and see them enjoy them like I've enjoyed them. I used to have a collection of Disney enamel pins. I had like a lanyard. I actually have a whole book of them. Oh I my gosh. To do the pin trading at Disney. What? Yes. I used to do that. Yeah, and so now, now once you get to an, the adult pin trader, <laughs> then, then you get a book and then you like, can wow. flip through and really nerd out. That is intense. <laughs> wow. Did you say that everyone loves Disney though? So I did. I feel like we kind of got that one half right. I now. think we got yeah. the judges. Half point. Half point. Okay, so we did not get the pin, but these are the pins that we would have gotten. Okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Coffee? Coffee. Coffee grounds. Coffee grounds. And I think just ground ground. I think ground ground. Yeah. Just dirt. The, the dirt only ground. edible one is the co the coffee grounds. Yeah. Have you ever eaten a chocolate covered coffee bean? I have. Yeah, they're, they're really good. They're delicious. Yeah. Look at that, common ground. Common ground, Ricky. Common ground. Listen, even though we didn't win the prize, we won the, the friendship. We won the friendship. Maybe the real common ground was the friends we made along the way. Wow. Pop quiz, street fighters. History has no shortage of famous beefs, and I ain't talking about cows. I'm talking about a feud and a fussing and a fighting. Which of these families were known for hating each other? Was it A, the Montagues versus the Capulets, B, the Hatfields versus the McCoys, C, the Grahams versus the Tewksburys, or D, the Flintstones versus the Jetsons? The answer is E, all of the above. All of these families were notorious for settling disagreements with bloody violence, especially the Flintstones and the Jetsons. Not a lot of people are gonna tell you this, but behind the scenes, it was a bloodbath. Conflict on planet Earth is nothing new. 
There was conflict whenever Jesus stepped onto the earth and there was conflict whenever he left. But when it comes to conflict, what did Jesus do? How did he react? Did he just sit back and peacefully agree with absolutely everyone? No, there were people who did not like him, who opposed him at every turn, who did not like what he believed. And what did he do? Well, as people who want our lives to look like his, we need to know that it's okay to disagree, especially when we see injustice. We need to stand up and we need to speak out because that's what Jesus did. He spoke up when he saw something wrong and he didn't use violence and he didn't shout louder. He spoke the truth in love and we're called to do the same. I'm the quiz man. Goodbye. Whoa, oh, 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 Okay, when it comes down to it, Iron Man does have his merits. I mean, Tony Stark is no Peter Parker, but very few are. I can understand why you like Spider-Man. I mean, you grew up loving him, so he matters to you. It is okay that you like Iron Man. Thank you. We can be friends. Yes, and you liking Iron Man doesn't take away from the fact that I really enjoyed hosting the Loop Show with you this month. Is it true that you once talked about Spider-Man for 30 minutes straight? Sure is, check it out on YouTube. When you disagree with someone, speak the truth in love. You can cut the tension with the truth. Find common ground, but don't be afraid to speak up. Truth and grace go hand in hand. Thanks for joining us this month, Ellie. It was a blast. Thanks for having me. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the ride. ride. Spider-Man is better. Iron Man. Spider-Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. Iron Man. So we all have someone that we disagree with. Who is that someone for you? And how can you specifically show love to that person this week? Maybe it's giving them a compliment or laughing at a joke, or maybe it's just not saying the first thing that comes to mind when they say something that you disagree with. Where can you find connection and common ground with that person? And remember, loving someone doesn't mean always agreeing with them. It just means being loving in how you disagree with them. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that your truth is absolute but your love is also unconditional. God, help us to love unconditionally with our words and our actions. God, help us to be more loving to those that we disagree with. Amen. Look, it can be hard sometimes, but remember that in everything that you do, in every way that you choose to love someone, you are showing them God's love. And remember, we are always praying for you. Now that you've learned the ABCs, we wanna give you the opportunity to invite Jesus into your heart. When you say yes to Jesus, you are putting Him first, making Him the leader and Lord of your life. Are you ready? As a sign of support, let's all say this prayer together. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, welcome to my world. I ask you to come into my heart and to forgive me of all my sins. I decide today to follow you and to make you the leader and Lord of my life. I believe it, I receive it, and I will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are so excited for you. Make sure to tell your Connect Group leader so we can celebrate with you and give you next steps. All right, church kids, you know what time it is. Get up on your feet and get ready to yell out some truth. Are you ready? Woo! Okay, here we go. I have a home in his house. I have a home in his house. I belong here. I belong here. Jesus cares for me and loves me. Jesus cares for me and loves me. I know whose I am. I know whose I am. And God has a purpose and a plan for my life. God has a purpose and a plan for my life. Woo! Church kids, we hope you take the steps this week to be truth detectives, to ask the big questions, and to find out who Jesus is so that you can know the truth. We will see you next week. And don't forget, it's a great day to, to be, be a church, church kid! kid. Yeah! 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 Yeah!